So Apple held their WWDC event this year, as they always do, they announced some software, tiny tiny bit of hardware technically, let's talk about it, let's sum it up, and let me tell you my highlights of the whole event. So the first thing we got to look at was of course iOS 14 and all its new features, and it had a few to be fair this time, it started with new widgets, the Android style widgets are coming to iPhone finally, and never feature that they've nabbed, and improved and made it their own way, and most people aren't going to take it that way, but it's there. We've got ones for weather, calendar, news, music, Music, that sort of stuff. They can be sized as well, so they can be as small as like four app squares to the whole width of the screen, and it can be placed anywhere, just like all the other apps. So that's that's brilliant. There's also a smart snap feature, which basically has a stack of them where you can scroll through and see all of the widgets in one, and it automatically curates which ones it wants to put on the front, depending on which ones you use most. So news can be at the front if you use that a lot, let's say during the day, music later on, or calendar during the day, so you can see what stuff you're doing. It can basically just adjust how you use it, and then you don't have to have six different widgets so you can just have that one screen it's it's personalized obviously i can't really complain about widgets it's just a new touch it's gonna make home screens look a little bit nicer so i'll take it then there's an app library which if you've had a home screen with folders and stuff to organize all your apps so you don't have millions of pages this basically removes the need to even have those folders at all it's also into standard categories though so photography creativity and like social media apps that sort of stuff it puts them all in those i don't know if you can customize your own there but as far as i know it's just standard ones so no niche categories Categories. And it's all on one screen, you can get to it anytime, you can just scroll through and pick all the apps you need. And also the most used apps are actually physically bigger in the folder, so you can just go straight to them. The first three it would show would be, let's say, WhatsApp, something like that, in the social media bit. And then all the lesser ones you use would be in a smaller little group. So they're more prominent, click through it straight away go to it straight away. It's brilliant. And speaking of having cluttered home screens and stuff, you can just straight remove a page altogether. So let's say if you have a page full of lot of apps or many, many pages you just don't use or don't even get to half of the time, you can just hide them and then they're never seen again. <laughs> There's also a new compact version of Siri, which basically just removes all the whole screen thing where it shows the full text and just has the Siri icon at the bottom. Anything you ask for it and request will just come up straight at the top. For example, if you have the weather, it'll be a little, little widget at the top of the screen. This way you can actually see and reference what you're seeing on the screen while you're talking to Siri. Example, you're looking something up and you're like, I don't know what this word means. You hold Siri and ask for it. You can still read the word in case, you know, that was the whole point of asking Siri to come up. So that's quite nice. There's also compact calls as well, four standard calls, including FaceTime as well, and the support for stuff like Skype and Discord, which only just come up on the top, like a little widget again, there's a theme there. And that way your whole screen doesn't get fully covered up with someone calling you and you can still, if you wish to ignore them maybe, just carry on scrolling and doing your day. That's the thing a lot of people are gonna be happy about, including me, I can now continue scrolling and maybe ignore the calls a bit more, but it's nice, it's less intrusive, that sort of thing. I round up the rest, there's also picture in picture for other apps, mainly video is the only one they demo, they show Apple TV where you can swipe out the app, the video stays on your screen, you can shrink it, leave it on the home screen, go onto an Ever app, etc. They also show it on FaceTime as well, so you can leave and keep your video on. I don't know what else it'll be supported with, I'm going to assume apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, that sort of thing, you can just have open on any other app, that would be really nice. Maps has also been given an upgrade, they've allowed cycling as an option for transport, instead of purely either going walking straight to a car or public transport you can also have that option as well and it also includes elevation stuff so it's kind of smart with that so you can plan and see okay if you're going up a hill you might want to avoid that route it also includes stairs if you need to get off your bike and carry it up a lot of detail there, I like that. Finally, the last two features I mentioned, Apple Clips, which is where you can quickly get onto an app that you need to use for, let's say, renting a scooter or a bike or something, or going to a shop and buying and paying something with their app without actually fully downloading it. And Apple Car Keys, I don't think it's officially called Apple Car Keys, but I'm going to call it that. You can essentially now have keys in your wallet on your phone just as you could with your card and all your other passes and stuff. And so far they've only supported it for BMW and Ford, but that's really cool that they're doing that. It basically works essentially how you think it would. Your phone virtually becomes your keys. You don't have to carry your keys around. Your car will recognize when you're near, unlock it, let you start the car. But also you can share your keys to a friend or something. Let's say if you want a friend to drive your car while you're out or something, you can say, okay, I'll temporarily let you drive it for a day or that sort of thing. That's really cool, I like that. But anyway, that's enough of those features. 
let's go on to iPodOS. Now iPodOS is very similar to iOS as it always has been since that's what it spawned from and all the features I mentioned before are pretty much straight carried over to iPodOS but there's a few extra ones that iPod gets. There's sidebars all over most of the apps there. They've got it on photos, calendar, files. I saw it on music as well. Basically it just allows you to see all the contents on the left, be able to tap through the whole app while seeing on the right the full app screen without actually having to get disturbed, clicking off the full screen of the app. It's, it's a nice little touch. It, it just clears it up in general while scrolling through. Apple Pencil gets some love with a new feature called Scribble where you can basically use your own handwriting and turn it straight into normal type text, which obviously will be useful in notes and stuff to jot down normal stuff, which probably many people will use it for. But you can use it outside anywhere to type text. And sure know what I mean, you can type it in messages, just handwrite whatever you want to text, turns it into text, you send that. Same with going on Safari, if you want to Google search something, handwrite what you want to search, translate it to text. Obviously this involves you to have an Apple Pencil and an iPad, but if you have both of them, now you have an extra reason to not put down your Apple Pencil or pick up your Apple Pencil if you haven't been using it. Most likely going to be that second option. Now these next features apply to not just the iPad, they apply to every other device as well. There's auto switching for AirPods, so basically you can start off with your iPhone connected to your AirPods, go straight to your iPad, as soon as you pick it up, it will recognize you're using that and will transfer the audio to that. If you switch to your Mac then, it will transfer the audio straight to that without you having to actually manually disconnect and reconnect to each one, which even if it's not to do with iOS devices and an Android devices, Apple devices, that's still a pain in general. It also gives you a reason to not want to leave the ecosystem because then you can now complain that I don't have to manually switch, which is a very good reason. And if I had more Mac devices, iPads, that would be nice. They've also allowed a spatial audio support, stuff like Dolby Atmos. Now spatial audio, I'll sum it up quickly if I can. Basically a way to map audio points so it only comes from a specific space, not just generally from your left side and generally from your right. It will come from this point in the space, this point in space. That was a very general description, but that's what it is. If you're familiar with Dolby Atmos and that sort of thing, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just adding support for that. I don't know if anyone's actually taken it up or not already, but that's now a thing with it. And default apps can finally be changed, except it's not what it seems like. It's only for browsers and the mail app, which is good. So you can change the mail to Outlook or something like that. And Safari, you can change that to Chrome. But you can't change any of the other things, especially I'd love it if they could maybe change the music app and let me have that to Spotify or something else. But I'll take a step in the right direction at least, just allowing us to do it anyway. Now Mac OS got a new upgrade with 11, also known as Big Sur, which Interesting name, I like it. I don't actually own a Mac product, so I can't really go too much into detail with it, so I'll just talk on some basics, which is mainly that it got a new design refresh. Most of the look has now been kind of taken from iOS and iPadOS, not directly taken, but a lot of inspiration from those. So you can see it from the new app designs. You can also see it from the fact they've actually nabbed Control Center now. That's a full thing. It definitely takes a lot of inspiration from there. And personally, obviously, I'm not on a Mac. I can't really say my personal opinion, but it's fine to me, but I'm only on an iPhone and to me I'm fine with that I wouldn't be bothered if that was a thing but I think a lot of people are giving it backlash I can understand but it's a big change it will always happen probably the biggest change though the biggest internal change that is this is the only hardware announcement we got Apple are confirming the rumored switch from Intel chips to their own custom ARM chips, which is going to be called Apple Silicon. They say this will be a two year transition process, so obviously it won't be immediate. They're still going to make some Intel based Macs and stuff, but eventually, after two years, this will be fully phased into their own. And I'm excited for how they do it. Obviously, they've been, I can say, dominating the space on the iPhone and the iPad. They've done super well with that. They just pack a lot of power into those, and they've done well since they switched those. Are they going to do the same on the Mac market? It's obviously a bigger challenge. There's a lot more they've got to do. They're not rendering massive amounts of videos. And especially I want to see what they do on a Mac Pro. That will probably be the last thing they upgrade because that needs some power. And they need to figure out the starting points first before they get up to that level. But again, I'm super excited if they manage that. I can see why they would definitely do it though. They just get more control of what's inside of it. And if you get control of making all the things in something, it just allows you to make everything exactly how you want it. That's exactly why the iPhone and the iPad just felt so dominant. Even if they, let's say, had lower RAM and specs and stuff like that, they still outperformed many other options. So it's going to be a good thing if they get it right. I'm hoping for good things. But there you go, that's all the highlights I found from WWDC this year. I enjoyed it, I mean obviously it's mainly software stuff, a lot of people are probably excited to hear about an actual new iPhone, I'm still excited to hear about that, but I will take this, I'll take iOS 14, hopefully the public beta comes out soon, because I'll be getting that on my main phone even though I never recommend you should. 
I'll take the risk, <laughs> I'll see what it's like, I'll run it for a couple of days. You got any questions on what that's going to be like, let me know because I'll probably make a video on that as well. But that is it, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!